What's up, my name's Technobo here for Troubleshoot and welcome to this tutorial for installing and using G-Hollow. G-Hollow is a super simple and easy to use plugin that allows you to create holograms in your world, including images and animations. To install the plugin, head over to the plugin section, select this bigger tab and then search for G-Hollow. Simply install a version that's compatible with your server and restart. Alternatively, you could download it from the Spigot page and upload it to your Server Pro panel. Keep in mind that the plugin also requires the Placeholder API plugin to work properly. You can see what plugins you already have installed by going to the Install tab under Plugins. Let's jump straight into the plugin. Slash hollow help shows the list of all commands and what each command does. You should be referring to this often if you get confused during this tutorial. It does get rather in depth. To begin, we need to create a hologram and give it an ID. The ID can be literally anything. I'll make one with the name test slash hollow create test. To remove it later, we can use slash hollow remove followed by an ID like test. I won't be running that just yet. We can view a list of holograms later with slash hollow list. We can also check the location and content of our holograms with slash hollow info followed by the ID. So in my case, test. Of course, there is no content and the hologram is invisible. If you have lots of holograms, you can get back to them easily using slash hollow TP followed by the ID. This will teleport us directly into where the hologram is. Later, we can also move holograms with slash hollow TP here followed by the ID, so test. How do we know it's moved? Well, we can use slash hollow info test. And as you can see, the Z coordinates have changed. As mentioned earlier, our holograms are empty. Let's fix that. We can easily add or remove rows of text with a simple command. I'll run slash hollow, a row, meaning add row, followed by the ID and then text. So for example, I'll add hello to the first line. I'll run slash hollow, a row, test, which is the ID, followed by hello. After hitting enter, you can see our little hologram appears right here. Of course, it's on the floor. Let's go ahead and fix that. I'll simply stand on a block and then run slash hollow, TP here, test. Now it's moved. Let's add another line of text, slash hollow, a row, test, and we'll say welcome to my server. And I'll also add just a test row with hollow, a row, the name of the hologram, and test. Now we have three lines. Let's go ahead and remove a line. We can do this with slash hollow R row followed by the ID and then the number of the row. In this case, we see it's the third line. So I'll enter three and hit enter. Now the row has been deleted. A row adds to the end of the hologram, but we can insert a row using slash hollow I row followed by the ID, a row number where to place it before, and then finally some text. I'll add a second line and push everything else down by one. So I'll use hollow I row test two, and for the text, I'll just enter and hello and welcome to my server. Before we get to more advanced commands, let's see the info command again to see the lines of text and line numbers in chat for the hologram, slash hollow info, followed by the ID test. And there we go. We see the location, number of lines, and the text that each line has. We can edit existing rows with slash hollow s row, followed by the ID, the row number, and finally text to change. Let's add some color to the first line and add a comma as well. So I'll run slash hollow s row test one, meaning the first line, and I'll enter and six hello and a comma. This way, we change the color of the line and we've added a comma to the very end of it. Now, the and doesn't make sense, so I'll run hollow r row test two. Hello, welcome to my server. To reorganize our holograms, we can use slash hollow m row followed by the ID, the row source, and then the row destination. To do this, let's add a couple more lines. Slash hollow a row test, this is a test line. Let's move this test line right to the start. Slash hollow m row followed by the ID test, and we're moving the third line to the first position as such, slash hollow, emro test three one. There we go. If you'd like, we can copy a hologram in its entirety. First, let's create a new hologram elsewhere, slash hollow, create test two. Then we can copy it with slash hollow copy, followed by both of the IDs. So source, test, and destination test two. There we go. If you have another supported hologram plugin, you can simply use slash hollow import followed by the name of the plugin to import existing ones from there. The suggestions that it gives you are just folders from your plugins folder. Finally, the most interesting command of this plugin is importing images. 
We can import images by running the command slash hollow image followed by the ID of our hologram. I'll use test2 space followed by avatar, file, helm or URL. Then a value and optionally a size for the image. Avatar and helm both let you import a player's head. Avatar has no overlay and the helm one does. This is if your player head has two layers or just one. Helm is the one with two layers. To create one from my head, I'll simply use slash hollow image followed by the ID test2 avatar and I'll enter my username techno. Upon doing this, you'll see the hologram of my player head in the world. Awesome. Let's do something a bit more exciting. The file argument lets us choose an image from a folder on the server. But instead, let's use the URL argument to import a file from the web. So, slash hollow image ID, which in my case is test2, URL space followed by the URL of our image. I'll use the server pro icon that I uploaded to Imager. We can hit space once again, and this is very important unless it's an extremely tiny image. Each pixel on the image is represented by a pixel in game. A size is defined by a number that we enter here after the URL, such as 10 for a 10 by 10 pixel square, or we can add a comma to this and a second number. This defines not only the height, but also the length too. So 10 comma 20 is 10 pixels high and 20 pixels long. I'll leave it at just 10. Upon doing this, you can see that the icon's been imported to our world. Is it too small? Well, running the command again, this time with a different size, will replace the existing sign. I'll run, say, 30. Awesome. It's a bit low. Hollow. TP here. Test 2. And there we go. What about transparency on our image? Well, I'll import an image with a transparent background. As you can see, they just appear as semi-transparent squares. It's not exactly completely transparent, but they're definitely trying to be. Finally, we have animations. These are really cool. Let's go ahead and add an animated line to the bottom of this welcome sign over here, which has the ID test. Instead of creating a new one, I'll run slash hollow a row to add a row of text test, which is our original ID. And then all we have to do is call an animation from the animations file in the config section of our plugin by entering its name. Enter percentage capital A colon followed by the name of the animation. For example, I can use white line and then simply enter another percentage sign to close it off. Upon hitting enter, you should see an animated white line right below it with a gray line moving across it. We'll see how to create our own animations in the config section of this video. Finally, the last command I have for you is slash g hollow reload or slash g hollow rl. This command reloads the plugin's settings from the config files and we'll be using it after changing any settings there. Locate the config in the plugins folder. Inside of here, we have a couple of folders. Data is a folder that contains data used by the plugin and shouldn't be modified. Images can contain image files that you upload that we can refer to in game using the file argument we saw earlier instead of, say, URL. Lang contains multiple files. These are just plain text and contain localization for the plugin. Modifying these files change how the plugin talks to users in game. Animations.yml contains the animations that we saw in game once again. By default, it has two example animations that we can use in game, boat list and white line. We already used the first one, white line. To create a new one or edit an existing one, simply copy from this template. Name, colon, new line, update, colon, followed by the number of ticks before progressing to the next frame in the animation. Then new line, text, colon, and then a list of what I can only explain as frames. These are a collection of text and each line is a new frame. The line progresses through the sequence from start to finish and then loops back to the start when it's done. Each frame is shown a certain number of ticks apart, which we set above in the update section. And finally, we have config.yml. This is where the rest of the settings for the plugin are located. We have three sections lang, options, and symbols. We can change the language under the language section by simply changing the text here to a name that corresponds to a file name in the lang folder. Under options, we can change the max list radius to prevent the plugin causing server lag by searching through all of our holograms and only showing a list of holograms within a certain area. Text distance is how far characters are apart. Empty line is simply just a placeholder that we can use to represent exactly that an empty line. In game, if we'd like to insert an empty line, all we have to do is hollow I row to insert name of the hologram, a location, and then we'll enter brackets, empty, close brackets, or whatever is defined in the server settings. There we go. You can see 
we've now skipped a line. Rainbow Color is a special character that we can use in-game to make everything after it an animated rainbow color. We can set the colors right below and a tick delay rate next to refresh to change how fast the rainbow effect occurs. I'll modify the first line to be and you, which is the placeholder for rainbow color. This is a test line. There we go. You can see it's now a rainbow animation. Then we have image options. These let us change how an image is rendered in game. The symbol, which we'll see in the next section, is two brackets with an X between them. This represents a solid block or a pixel. When we have lots of these shown in game and they have different colors, they look like pixels of color in an image. The transparency symbol is supposed to represent a transparent pixel in an image. This can be easier to see through. We can't just have blank text. Then finally, we have the symbol section. In here, we can define custom characters with a placeholder on the left and a Unicode character placeholder code on the right. The first, which we call in game with brackets X bracket, is a simple block. That's what slash U2588 means. The second is a simple straight line down. We saw both of these when importing images in game. Anyways, I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you have any video suggestions, leave them in the comments below. If you're having issues with anything, contact our support team. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.